Hi everybody, it's me, Aviva, your art director from the Ed Asner Family Center, coming at you with another video. <laughs> we are going to be doing a really fun project. It's my favorite type of clay we're going to be using today. This is going to be an entire little video based on the clay Sculpey, okay? Sculpey is a oven bake kind of clay. It's my favorite kind of clay because basically it comes in like every single color you can ever imagine. You can find it at any craft store. And my favorite part about it is like with Play-Doh and like any other type of like clay like that, um, it's like a one-time use. You make something incredible, you're so proud of it, and they're like, I gotta put it back into the box because it's gonna dry out or it's gonna be all gross and cracked afterwards. But now with this, this is such a smooth finish after you take it out of the oven. You have to cook it for about like 10 minutes at 350. Nothing, I don't think you have to be super precise with it either. Just keep an eye on it. You don't have to cook it for any longer than 10 minutes though. But I'm gonna show you some really easy techniques to make something cool at home. Okay, so just to get started, we're going to roll up our sleeves, make sure we have a space that's clear, doesn't have any like dust or anything in that, you don't want your clay getting dirty, and yeah, let's get started. So I'm going to choose the colors that I'm going to want to do today. We're going to be learning how to do two different projects. One is how to make beads out of Sculpey, and another one is how to make an easy um, like twirly pinch pot. But let's get started. What we should start out with is our bowl. So I'm gonna choose the color that I want for my bowl. I think I'm gonna go with a light green kind of bowl today. So I'm just gonna open up the colors that I'm gonna to need today actually first. All right, so these are the three colors I'm going to be using today. And I'm gonna take all the other colors that I'm not gonna be using, but maybe I'll use a different time over here. All right, so first to start off with my bowl, I decided I was gonna do a green colored bowl. And so this project is super easy. You can do multiple colors if you want. It's really easy to mix colors with this. You're not gonna get a solid color when you mix, but it'll be like a cool kind of swirly tie-dye color if you take two little balls and just roll them around for a long time and they should make a really nice swirl color. So before I ripped it, I should have showed you that there's different sections here that show you little tiny pieces that you can take off, nothing too much, it just, it's a good start. You don't wanna to take too much at the beginning. But what we're gonna be doing is, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a lovely snake swirly pinch pot kind of bowl. So I'm gonna break it up into a few pieces just to get the clay warmed up. The best way to make your clay really malleable and squishy and able, easier to work with is using the heat from your hands and really warming it up. All right, now that I've made my clay really nice and warm and it makes it a lot easier to really squish it around, make it the shape that you're looking for, okay? So what I'm gonna start to do is I'm gonna make a snake, okay? Um, if you ever played with Play-Doh or if you've ever made any type of bread or anything, you're gonna know that you're gonna wanna knead and roll out your bread, okay? Not your bread, your clay. So you're gonna use your palms of your hand to really roll it out. We're gonna try and roll it as much as we can until it's as thin as possible. So what I'm doing is I am rolling over those thick pieces. I'm keeping an eye on spots that are a little bit thicker than the rest of my snake and then just working my hands over that like that. So I'm gonna do this for a second and then you guys are gonna come back once my snake is really, really nice and long and skinny. Thank you. 
All right, I have my snake ready to go. She is pretty even and long. And so I was able to do my snake all in one roll in one piece. But if you're having a little bit trouble and your snake is breaking at parts, no worries. You know, this clay is perfect for just if it rips, like let's say it rips a little bit right here in the skinny part. I'm like, oh no, my snake is broken. So then you just take it, right? Overlap it. And then you just kind of roll it back together. Super easy fix. All right, now that I have my long snake, I'm gonna show you the process of how to turn this little bad boy into a bowl. Okay, so I'm taking this end here and I am just gonna to start to roll it in. So as I'm rolling, let's get a good base here. So you want this roll to be flat, it's starting to look like a little snail. So now that I have a good base to my bowl, I'm going to start building the sides up. So see, I'm starting to overlap some of these rings instead of it having it be flat on my table. So as I overlap, I'm starting to let it kind of um, go like a little bit diagonally out so I have those sides to my bowl. And so when you're baking a bowl like this, you don't need to bake it for any more than 10 minutes because it's going to be a super thin on the sides. The long, the like thicker your um, piece is that you're making, the longer you're going to want to keep it in. So maybe around like 15 or 20 minutes for something a little bit thicker if you're making like a creature or anything like that. So see how I was started to stack it up on its sides and now I have a perfect little bowl here. And so when, when it's still wet like this, you want to make sure that you're very careful with the sides. I'm pushing down a little bit so no little spaces are there. But this is a perfect little bowl for some rings or any type of like push pins that you may have on your desk. Super cute. And if you could also make it into a planter if you poke a little bottom, a little hole at the bottom of your pot here so you can have some drainage for any other type of plant that you want to put in here. You always want to make sure you have a hole at the bottom of your pot if you're planting something. All right, so my bowl is looking super cute. It's a little wonky, but I kind of like it with like a little bit of wobble on the sides. You could also add other colors on top if you want to add some polka dots. You just roll a little ball, put them on the sides. Totally up to you. All right, I'm super happy with that bowl. So I'm just going to put it right here. And I'm going to show you now how to make beads. This is my favorite thing to do with Sculpey. It's, um, I've been trying to make a lot of jewelry lately, and sometimes I can't find the beads that I want at, um, at my local craft store. So what I like to do is I take the colors that I want and make it into something that I would want on like a necklace or a bracelet or maybe even glued onto a ring. But what I'm going to be doing is taking these two colors and I'm going to try and make um, a butterfly charm. But if you wanted to make any type of like regular swirl bead, all you would have to do is take a little piece of your Sculpey and you're going to once again keep get that heated up in your hands, roll it into a little ball. Okay. And then you can take any type of tool. I'm just going to use a paintbrush that I have laying around. And I'm going to just poke it through the middle. You can also use a chopstick or a toothpick if you're working with smaller pieces. Taking your, your tool out. You should have a little weird like mark here from pushing it through the other side. So just smooth that out. And you have a very nice little hole in the middle here. And now you have a perfect red bead to, it could be like a good base for like a ladybug kind of bead. Anything you'd like. Just get a lot of colors to work with. This clay is really cheap. It's about like $2. Um, but now that I have this beginning bead, maybe I'll just put that to the side here because maybe I'll use that later on. But I want to make my butterfly. So I'm going to try and show you. You can make any type of animal and then I'll show you at the end how to add that kind of loop for um, 
a little loop for where you're gonna put your string, okay? So I'm gonna just heat this up in my hand, giving a little bit of a squeeze. Oh, that's not super squishy. Okay, so now I'm gonna split my piece in half. And for a butterfly, it has four different sections on the wings, two on each side. So I'm gonna roll my ball. Use it, see how I'm using the palm of my hand, like how I did with my other um, snake. I'm still using my palm to make that bowl, and I'm making little circle, circular movements. And then to make a flat kind of pizza crust shape, a nice circle, I'm just using my palm again to flatten that out. I'm gonna do the same thing three more times for my wings. Alright, now that I have all four of my circles for my wings, I'm going to just bring those close together, the two touching on the top, and then I'm going to overlap the bottom one, the top one, like that, and now picking up those two, I'm just going to connect them like that. So now I have four overlapping circles. So this is really just if you want to do a butterfly at home, you can do any animal you'd like, or really any shape you'd like. Beads are really, this is gonna be a very large bead now that I'm looking at it. Maybe it'll be like a pendant on a necklace. But now I'm gonna take another color for my middle part where the body lies, and I'm just gonna make another snake like how I did for our bowl. I kind of folded down the top for the head. And then I'm just gonna place it right there in the middle. So to make sure that your pieces are secure and the wings won't fall off or my body won't fall off, I am going to make sure that these sides are really pressed together. You don't need to blend them. You can if you'd like, but I really want them to look separated so I'm just really squeezing it down. Okay. So I'm going to just not make it super detailed today. I could add in some antennas, some decoration onto the wings, but just I just wanted to give you a basic idea on how to make a, like a pendant or a big kind of bead for... Oh, this could also be a keychain too. It doesn't have to be just a bead. I might do that. So now I'm going to make my little loop for where my string would hang, okay? So once again, I'm gonna roll it into a ball, place it on the table, and I'm gonna make a very thick little snake shape. So once again, I'm rolling with my palm. See, I'm not making my snake too skinny, but just the right size so that I can curve it like a U, and upside down U. And then you're gonna make a little tiny handle on the top of your butterfly. This one's a little large. I think I would make mine a little bit smaller, but just so you can see the, the kind of shape that I'm making. So now is the time that you take the heat of your fingers and blend that in. So see, you can barely see those edges. I might need to move my head up a little bit so I can get really in there. But this is so you, may, you can um, be sure that you're String won't break off if you put it on your keys or if you have it on a necklace You don't want to be losing the pendant that you made. So now that that's all blended in I can't see any I can't see most of the edges there. I'm just going to lay my guy back down And I made this super cute little Butterfly pendant. I really like how it looks. I might add on some more decorations later on Before I put it in the oven make sure you are sure about your pieces before you put them in. Because once you have those your art into the oven, you can't really add on to it anymore. All right, so something like my bowl, once again, you probably, won't be, both of these are gonna be uh, cooked at 275, and something like this that's a little bit thinner, I'd say about 10 minutes, and then something a little bit thicker, like our butterfly pendant, would probably be around 15 to 20 minutes, okay? Just keep an eye on them. You wanna make sure they don't get too dried out, but 
there you have it. Two super simple projects. Don't forget our bead. Some really easy beads that you can make at home. Try making a whole string of these in, in different colors. I'm sure that'd be very beautiful. But that should do it today for our Sculpey project. I really hope you guys make some cool jewelry or pots or beads or keychains, anything that you'd like. Sculpty, Sculpey? Sculpey, yeah, no, no T, Sculpey. So you can find it on Amazon or any other like store near you. It wouldn't be at any pharmacies. You have to actually go to a craft store, I think. But thank you for joining us. I think uh, these turned out really cute. I'd love to see yours. Make sure that you are sending in photos of whatever you make to our email or posting them on Facebook and tagging us at the Ed Eisner Family Center. Um, and yeah, thank you for joining me. I hope you had so much fun. I'll see you next Saturday.